our shop today, we have a 2002 Ford Taurus with a little over 170,000 miles on it. It has a 3.0 liter VIN 2 engine. The owner's complaining of a check engine light, lack of power, poor fuel mileage, and a vibration in the engine when it is accelerated. When I drove the vehicle into the shop, I could feel the vibration was due to a misfire. This is probably the cause for the poor fuel economy and lack of power. We will start on our diagnosis by repairing the miss. Our first step was to connect a scan tool. We found two trouble codes, PO302 and PO306. These codes mean that cylinders number two and number six have misfires. To check the severity of the misfires, we went into a cylinder contribution test area. Here we can see the misfires are very frequently occurring. The misfires could be occurring due to a fuel, compression, or a spark issue. Due to the firing order of this engine, when cylinders two and six are misfiring from the same coil, it is most likely a spark issue. To be sure, we connected a timing light to the ignition wires leading to cylinders two and six and started the engine. When the light is skipping, like this, it means an ignition misfire is occurring on the cylinder. Because of the way a DIS coil fires, these misfires could be caused by a defective ignition wire, spark plug, coil, and a defector switch in the PCM or powertrain control module. These distributorless, or DIS coils, are actually three coils in one package. Each coil fires two cylinders simultaneously in an electronic loop. The current exits from one tower, fires the two spark plugs, and returns through the other tower. The coil firing time on the system is controlled by the PCM. The PCM is the main computer on the vehicle. Before we go any further with this diagnosis, let's take a look at how this and many ignition systems function. Behind me is the beginning of a wiring diagram displaying this vehicle's ignition system. Right here is the connector that plugs into the coil. We are looking into the connector as if it were unplugged from the coil. Notice the pins are marked 4, 3, 2, and 1. Pin 4 is a 12 volt power supply to the entire coil. It gets power from the ignition relay. All the primary windings have power supplied to them from pin 4. Each one of these primary windings is in control of two cylinders. For example, the first winding is for cylinder 4, 3, and so on. Each one of the primary windings is also connected to one of the remaining pins in this connector. The first winding is connected to pin 3, the next connected to pin 2, and the last is connected to pin 1 internally through the coil. The connector then connects each primary winding to the PCM. Inside the PCM are transistors. Many times they are referred to as drivers. For diagnostic purposes, they are really nothing more than an on-off switch. For this video, we are going to call them switches. The PCM controls the coil by turning a switch connected to the primary winding of each coil on and off. Each of the switches is connected to ground. When a switch is turned on, a path for the supplied electrical current is completed. Remember, the supplied current comes through pin 4. The current then passes through that primary winding of the coil and onto ground. When the PCM wants the coil to fire the spark plugs, it turns the switch off and the coil fires. Let's do a quick review of what we just learned. The voltage for the coil is supplied through the relay to the number 4 pin of the coil. The number 4 pin of the coil feeds voltage to each of the three primary windings. Each of the primary windings is connected to a switch in the PCM. When the switch for the winding is connected to ground, current will flow through the circuit, charging the primary winding. When the PCM wants the coil to fire, the switch opens, inducing a voltage to the secondary winding, and the spark plugs connected to the coil are fired. Problems occur in this system when the primary winding of one of these coils shorts out or high secondary voltage fires through the primary winding to complete its path. In either case, the chances are very good switch damage in the PCM will occur. Okay, back to our diagnosis. To check which component or components have failed in the ignition system, we started by checking the resistance of ignition wires 2 and 6. Remember, the spec for suppression wires like these is no more than 8,000 ohms per foot. Number 2 wire checked out okay, but look at that, number 6 is way over spec. 
When an ignition wire has high resistance on a DIS ignition system, it will also cause its companion cylinder, or number two in this case, to misfire. High resistance at any part of the secondary voltage circuit can also cause damage to other supporting components. For example, while this ignition wire was losing its conductivity, it forced the coil to produce a higher and higher voltage to overcome the additional resistance. By overstressing the coil, it may have failed and could have also used the PCM switch as an alternative path to carry the high voltage to its companion cylinder. Frequently, this is how the switch in the PCM is ruined. We will need to test all these components and take a look at the spark plugs before just replacing the ignition wire. We first check the primary winding of the coil. Pin 4 is the common or the power feed to each of the primary windings of the coil. Remember, we were looking at a diagram of the connector, not the coil. To determine the pin numbering on the coil, imagine a connector plugged into the coil. Check the resistance from pin 4 to each of the other terminals, like this. Secondary resistance is checked by measuring the resistance between each of the coil ignition wire towers, like this. The specs for this coil are on our website. Just click the link below in the description. This coil checked out OK. Next we check the switches or drivers in the computer using a 12 volt power probe. Connect the power probe to the battery and touch pins 1, 2, and 3 of the connector and crank the engine. When the driver is capable of switching, the green LED light will flash. When the light doesn't flash or stays on, either the PCM is defective or the wiring to the PCM from the coil is damaged and needs to be replaced. As you can see, all the switches are working and the PCM is firing all the coils. Alternative tools to the power probe are a Noid light with a couple jump wires or a test light. We found the least expensive test light worked the best. Higher priced test lights will usually use a higher wattage bulb and the current used to power the primary winding is not enough to light the bulb. The owner of this vehicle is blessed. If this ignition wire was left unattended much longer, the coil, and very possibly the PCM, would have also failed. Let's quickly review what was covered today. A misfire can be caused by an ignition, fuel, or compression issue. The first diagnostic step is to determine which system the problem lies in. When a misfire is caused by an ignition problem on a DIS system, two cylinders are usually affected. When one part of the ignition system fails, it will eventually affect other components. Get it taken care of as soon as possible or it will cost more in the end. Always test the driver and the PCM before replacing the ignition system components. If the driver is stuck on, it can ruin the new component very quickly. That's it for today. See you again next time in the Wells Garage.